Well, you know, I go back to what Kelvin Sampson told me about Joe. And again, Kelvin and I go back a really long way, back to the 80s when he was at Montana Tech. I was at Rocky Mountain College. And I asked him to talk to me, you know, about Joe, uh, how he felt about him as a coach and that type of thing. And Kelvin, without hesitation, said, he's just an old ball coach. And you can't get a better compliment from Kelvin Sampson than being called just an old ball coach. You know, and uh, <laughs> I, think, I think Joe, from an X's and O's standpoint, is superior. I mean, I, I watch what they run. I watch what they do. Uh, extremely well coached. The challenge at East Carolina in this league is, is matching the rec recruiting of Memphis and Cincinnati and Houston, you know, and I can go, go on and on and on at Wichita state, you know, because it's, it's a different dynamic. I mean, this is a city driven league. And then you've got East Carolina. That's an outlier that way. It's a rural community. So there's, there's different, there's, there's different kids that, that want to play in that environment. I'll go back to my days at Washington state with Kelvin Sampson. I mean, look, Washington State's in Pullman, Washington, okay? It's up by the panhandle of Idaho. You're, you're literally eight miles from the Idaho campus. It's right across the line. Now, there's wheat fields everywhere, okay? So when we brought a kid in from Los Angeles or from the Bay Area or from Seattle or wherever, we literally flew him in at night, all right? We did. We flew him in at night <laughs> because we didn't, we didn't want him to see the rolling wheat fields that went on for like miles forever, you know, now the campus was great. Just like East Carolina campus is great. I'm not suggesting you bring guys into to Greenville at night. I mean, it's a nice community, <laughs> but I'm just saying what we did at Pullman and, and we were able to get certain kinds of kids to come in and play the Kelvin Sampson way in Pullman. And I think that's where the, the separation has been, but you can clearly see this is a more talented team that Joe has than what he's had in the last couple of years. And, if not for this injury, we'd be having a different discussion about East Carolina right now. That's why I'm anxious to see how they finish versus how they've been over the last five or six games. Yeah, no doubt. Um, it's year four of um, Coach Dooley's five-year deal. And, um, you know, uh, it's going to be imperative to, you know, finish well down the stretch. But I think, you know, this ball, unless this thing uh, totally goes off the rails, I think if you win – you know, two, three more games, and you get to that 14, 15 win mark, uh, considering where this program's been, um, that it's still progress in the right direction, even though it's not what anybody wants, um, that you have to look at it with the proper perspective and uh, and give Joe and this staff time because you're not going to go from, you know, ninth, 10th, 11th place in this league to the top three or four in this league without some road bumps. Well, I believe in Joe Dooley. I think that patience is a virtue. I've been in jobs like East Carolina where you don't have some of the competitive advantages that other schools have. Uh, I was fired, you know, at Central Connecticut. There's two kinds of coaches, those who have been fired and those who are going to be, you know, and I finally got my pink <laughs> slip, you know, in, in, in 1996. In fact, I saw where Bruce Pearl got a lifetime contract recently. I got a lifetime pink slip. That, that was the difference between <laughs> Pearl and myself. But when I say that, you know, my last two teams led the entire country and blocked shots for two consecutive years. In fact, we were the second greatest shot blocking team at that time, other than 88-89, Mutombo and Morning. I mean, we were as good a shot blocking team as anybody in the history of college basketball. And we had everybody back. And unfortunately, I got fired. We finished 500 in the league uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a program that had just really become Division One just before I got there. So that was part of the rebuild as well. We were independent for three of my five years there, but we started getting pretty good near the end, but I wasn't allowed to finish my job, you know, because I had a new AD, new president. They wanted to go their own way. I get it. That's the way it goes. In Joe's case, you know, I, I see better talent coming into this program and I see success stories like Jackson. I see success stories like JJ Miles. I see Brandon Suggs getting better year to year, Tristan Newton getting better year to year. And so uh, I, I think that, that Joe is on solid ground there. And I think he's going to be even on more solid grounds. We go down the stretch and into the next season as well. They're doing all the right things.